Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's move on. Now, the white working-class men are the least likely social group to get five GCSEs in this country or go to university. 35,000 of them are currently in the prison system, alienated, switched off or feeling ignored. Well, Stephen Manderson, who's better known as the award-winning rapper Professor Green, grew up on a council estate in Hackney, and he came here to talk, us about, to, talk to us about his documentary, Working Class White Men, which starts on Channel 4 tomorrow night. I'm Professor Green. I'm a musician, a documentary maker, and I'm from a working class background. I grew up on a council estate in Hackney, and I had first-hand experience of growing up in a low-income family. I want to understand why many of these men feel abandoned, and what the consequences are for Britain if we continue to look away. In many ways, you seem to have found people who, in a sense, also make up who you are? Um, I, there's, I guess there's little bits that I've experienced in each of the people. Because your only time was up, you wouldn't have been with Dad? With David, he lost both of his parents. Um, I lost my father. Thank you. <sighs> losing a parent is horrible, but losing both your parents at any age, let alone at 16, what, what do you do? With Lewis, he's straddling two worlds, which is something that I can definitely relate to. With his exams finally over, we're in Cambridge for a university open day. And a glimpse at the life that awaits, if he can make the grade. Uh, with Denzel being a bit of a weeder dealer, I've definitely done a bit of dealing <laughs> in my time. I'm no one to tell Denzel what he should spend his money on. But it does make you question his priorities. Yeah, I suppose. I'm, yeah, I hadn't thought about it. And there you are in primary school. Yes. Little you there. I'm sat slightly in front. I look almost superimposed, mm. don't I? My head looks too big for my shoulders. <laughs> but 25 years later, you have drawn many conclusions about white working class educational experience. And well, I'm wondering whether yeah. you could spot any of it in your own primary school. Do you know what? I actually had the opposite. It was, it was less white working class and more working class, as you can see. I was. Mm -hmm. Listen, the programme is on white working-class men. Reason being, it was born of a single statistic, which is that only 10% mm. of white working-class men will go to university, but they're the most likely to end up in jail or an addict. That puts them the least mm. likely to attend university. That was, was what it was born of. Post-Brexit, they, they make up 70% of the vote. I can make head nor tail of that. So, basically, this is a way of making Tanex and Cotex as polynomials uh, and approximating them in that form. You know, how many people are there like Lewis who, who could be where Lewis is, but we don't tap into because of low expectations? And there's a real acceptance of where they can get to. At Lewis's school, I spoke to a 14, 15 year old kid mm. and it didn't make the cut. Um, but I asked him about it and it, it, it Oh, it, and it still upsets me. If my child said what he said to me when I asked him what he wanted to be, I'd have, I'd have failed as a father. Um, I asked him what he wanted to be when he left school, and he said, well, I, I wanted to be a doctor. I said, wanted? And he went, well, yeah, that's, it's, I can't do that. I've got to leave school and get a job because I've mm. got to make money. He's got to support himself. Mm. And I think that's true of a lot of working-class families. Hello. How are you doing, Stephen? Hello, right, Stephen. Good to meet you. It's a Wednesday afternoon, and I've come to Bolton to meet 20-year-old David and his mates. But in the case of David, for example, whose parents both die of natural causes when he's 16... Yeah. Um, Two weeks It's actually apart. very clear that the welfare system failed, that no care was offered. Yep. That it seems that... Nobody knew his parents had died and he was alone in the world. Well, he was, when I found him, he was living in a hostel where no one even helped him with the letters that he received. So he missed out on two housing placements simply because no one helped him with, you know, no one gave him the help that he needed. Mm. And that's in a hostel. He Surely couldn't read or write. He couldn't read or write. Yeah. What about you? Because I almost wonder whether the rapper has now become a documentary maker and essentially a campaigner and possibly may end up in politics. 
I don't know, man. Growing up, I never wanted to be a part of politics. I didn't, I, did, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Economists and politicians are both very similar in that they speak in a way that most people just can't understand. But your life experience has given you something most of them don't have. Yeah, and I, I think it's a shame that we don't see more people like that in Parliament, because if you had people who actually understood the effect of the decisions they were making, then surely they'd make better decisions by people. Do you think you've done with rapping, or will rapping perhaps help spread the word? Um, rapping is social commentary, you know, and I suppose the documentaries are as well. The subject of, of white working class Britain isn't me putting on a cape and being like a superhero for the white working class, it's simply me having a look into a, a specific group of people. Um, well, rapping's given you access, hasn't it? But rapping, I, yeah, rapping has been... They rapping. know you, they like you, they trust you. Yeah, well, but until they trust you, me... And, until you meet Britain first. Until I meet Britain first, and then... But I couldn't walk... I didn't... I was. I threw my toys out of the pram when mm. I was asked to go on... Not on that march, but to that march. What am I doing here? I'm doing a documentary. I'm doing a documentary on white working class. I haven't come here to call names, so don't tell me what I am. I didn't want anything to do with them. I didn't want to give them a platform. But how could we explore the white working class if we didn't explore that avenue? It's easy to laugh at them, it's easy to, to ridicule them, it's easy to ignore them, but is that a sensible thing to do when people are being leveraged? They're having their anger and their unrest leveraged by people who are giving them someone to blame, when actually all that's doing is distracting them from looking at the, the old elites, the ones who really hold the power, who are actually to blame for their situation. And do you know what I find funny about it? The funniest thing about it is them walking around waving the British flag when really their country has done very, very little for them. Professor Green, and I think I can call you Professor Green because this is a <laughs> professorial journey. It is. It's a professorial analysis. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. in.